Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Pyromancer here, and welcome to the Destruction Warlock DPS Guide for Patch 7.1.5. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how you should be playing Destruction Warlock in the new patch. So if you're new to Destruction, you're probably going to enjoy playing it if you like relatively hard-hitting abilities, being able to have the option between focusing on those mainly hard-hitting abilities or kind of shifting your damage towards damage over time. Uh, you should definitely be knowledgeable about each encounter that you're going to be playing this class as, as it is one of the most movement-hindered classes in the game. So you certainly are going to want to pre-position yourself. That's going to be a key aspect of it. So really quick before we get into it, I'm going to be showing you guys the main changes that have happened in 7.1.5. So first of all, they've actually removed Mana Tap. A lot of you are going to be really happy about this. They've actually replaced Mana Tap with a new spell called Empowered Life Tap. Now, Empowered Life Tap essentially just takes your current Life Tap, there's no extra button, and makes it so that when you hit it, you gain 10% increased damage for 20 seconds. This is going to probably be our go-to talent for almost every situation, but we'll talk about talents here shortly. That said, Destruction Warlocks also gained bonus damage to almost every single ability. The damage increase was a by about 4%, so we're going to see a little bit of a damage increase from there. Channel Demon Fire was also buffed about 40%, which makes it much more valuable on single target, and we may even be using it for AoE situations as well. And then the last main change that I think is, is pretty noteworthy, they did switch Cataclysm and Eradication on the talent tree. So that's going to put Reverse Entropy, Eradication, and Empowered Life Tap on the same tree, and then Cataclysm, Fire and Brimstone, and Soul Harvest on the same tree. They did nerf the Grimoire Sacrifice damage by 25%, so this really is only going to be used in 3 plus target situations or in heavy AoE. We will not see too much use out of it in general in the upcoming raid. So let's get into the talents. This is the optimal single target spec for Destruction Warlock in raids that are going to be coming up. An explanation for each choice is going to be given in the descriptions for all of the talent options. So keep in mind that the level 45 and 75 tier talents are completely your preference and they may change um, as much as you want them to. So the first tier we're going to be looking at, the main abilities that we're going to have to contrast with each other are Backdraft and Roaring Blaze. Now, there's this argument between Backdraft and Roaring Blaze currently, as there always is, is what is actually the most realistic and what is going to be the easiest to play, you know, kind of the caveats of both. Shadow Burn can be used in Mythic Pluses. However, since it now replaces Conflagrate and is not a separate ability, we're going to be kind of staying away from that when it comes to raiding. Now... Backdraft, if you don't know, was changed. After casting Conflagrate, the, uh, the cast time of our next two Incinerate and or Chaos Bolts is reduced by 30%. This stacks up to four times, and you get two stacks per Conflag cast. So it's ultimately, two Conflags will give you four stacks. Each stack is consumed by casting one ability. This talent is going to be a much more forgiving playstyle than Roaring Blaze. Roaring Blaze is certainly going to pull ahead on single target and two target. Um, and I would even say three target as well. However, Backdraft does complement a more laid back playstyle. It is going to allow you to focus more on the mechanics of the fight, as it is generally not too difficult to play. But for pure DPS purposes and pushing fights during progression, I certainly am going to be playing Roaring Blaze myself, especially after getting the four piece, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Moving on to the next tier, the level 30 talents. Reverse Entropy essentially is out of the question at this point, which for some some people is pretty unfortunate because it does provide you with a reduced cast time on Chaos Bolt. I understand that that is generally a pretty awesome thing, and it is going to regenerate mana for you as well. However, it just doesn't stack up to the other two. In two target, Eradication is definitely a solid option. However, in general, we'll be taking Empowered Life Tap for single target and anything over two target. If there's not adds that are up long enough for you to really benefit much from eradication, then eradication may not be a, a very strong choice for that particular fight. So eradication is really only used on two target. If you want to, ELT is going to be used in every other situation. And I'll be uh, happy to link a week or down in the description for you guys for Empowered Life Tap, just in case you don't have one. Again, as mentioned previously, the level 45 talents are completely your choice. Uh, but moving forward, the level 60 talents is an interesting, quite an interesting tier. So for Mythic Plus, 
Cataclysm and Fire and Brimstone, and Soul Harvest are actually all viable options. If you want to focus more on boss damage, Soul Harvest is the clear winner in this situation. However, in Burst AoE, Cataclysm can definitely strive, and Fire and Brimstone is going to be much more useful for higher sustained AoE. If you're doing a dungeon that has Fortified, uh, or anything similar to that, skitter, uh, not Skittering, pardon me, but um, Teaming, it's potentially a good option if they're high health adds. And Fire and Brimstone used in conjunction with Pack Draft is definitely a solid option. However, for raining, we're going to see the most use out of Soul Harvest, which is interesting. We haven't seen this before. However, for the new patch, the base duration of Soul Harvest was increased to 15 seconds up to a maximum of 35 seconds. And because uh, of that, it is actually a pretty decent cooldown. We don't benefit from Fire and Brimstone in single target in any fashion, and Cataclysm doesn't start to be decent until 3-4 to four targets, assuming that they're stacked up as well. Moving forward, again, the level 75 talent tree is completely your choice. I tend to take Dark Pact or Burning Rush for that added defensive or mobility. Demon Skin is also a solid choice, however. I feel for most raid encounters, Dark Pact is going to be better for burst damage. If an encounter does relatively flatline damage throughout the whole encounter, there's not huge bursts of damage, Demon Skin is also a super good option. Moving to the level 90 talents, Grimoire of Supremacy is sort of out of the question at this point for destruction. Uh, Grimoire of Supremacy does reduce the damage of your Doomguard's Doom Bolt by 20% when you spec into it. This was done to keep the balance between the Doomguard buff that makes it so using Doomguard is more valuable for us outside of Supremacy, but keeps it so that Supremacy isn't the go-to talent for destruction. Sacrifice, as I mentioned before, was nerfed by 25%, so generally that's not going to be the best option for us at this point either. Again, that will be used in 3 plus targets or big AoE pulls, but Grimoire of Service is going to be the go-to option for almost every encounter in the Nighthold. The reason for that is our baseline pets were all buffed by 20%. Grimoire of Service actually benefits directly from this buff as they share essentially the same entity as your normal pets, so Grimoire of Service basically received a 20% buff as well. This is going to allow us to do higher priority target damage, higher burst damage, and more single target damage overall. And then the last talent tree, we essentially only have two options at this point. Soul Conduit, because of the changes to Channel Demon Fire, is sort of out of the question as far as uses go, and with our four piece from Nighthold in conjunction with our two piece, um, we're going to be having so many shards, especially if you're someone who was lucky enough to get a Feratory of Souls, that Soul Conduit really isn't much of an option at this point. Channel Demon Fire will be used in AoE situations and single target situations, whereas Wreak Havoc, as we would likely expect, is going to be the king of the two target world, as it has been since its release. So let's take a look at our priorities for different types of fights. So the thing about priorities is it's not necessarily how exactly you do your opener. And because there are so different, so many different types of fights as single target, 2 to 3 target, and 4 plus target fights, the priority for your spells does change as you go through each different type of fight. Because it is so different, I certainly would urge you guys to check out the Wowhead Destruction Warlock Guide link in the description, which will take you directly to the page where this is stated, and it will actually show you what the target, the spell priority is for different types of fights. It's just so complex, there's not enough time to condense it all into a video, so I apologize, but I will tell you guys how to do your single target opener. So for opening single target, there's a couple different ways you can do it. This is how I would lay it out personally and what I find to be the most effective opener for Destruction Warlock on a single target encounter. And then I'll explain the slight difference that you would see on two target. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cast two empowered life taps about six seconds before the pull. Why two, you ask? Well, when you first do it, it's only going to make the buff duration last for 20 seconds, but upon doing it the second time, it will increase to about 26 seconds, giving you overall more uptime in your opener. At about, right after you've done that, at about five seconds, you'll want to use your pre-potion. The difference between Potion of Prolonged Power and Potion of Deadly Grace is usually negligible. Either one can be used. However, Potion of Prolonged Power is going to strive and benefit you more in multi-target situations. Potion of Deadly Grace is really only good for burst, a, uh, burst single target phases like on Ilganoth, for example. So in general, Potion of Prolonged Power is going to be the way to go. Then at 4-5 to five seconds, you'd precast your Chaos Bolt. This is done to avoid shard capping in the opener. Since we're not taking Eradication, the damage increase from Chaos Bolt doesn't matter. It's just about getting the shards out so you don't shard cap. Immediately after doing that, while there is about 2-3 to three seconds on the pull timer, you'll want to 
double cast immolate for the maximum duration. Now, you can adjust these timers yourself personally based on your haste. Chaos Bolt could be precast at about three seconds as opposed to four or five. Base it off of your current gear and make sure that you're not early pulling the boss. We'll go back. So we'll double cast Immolate immediately after precasting our Chaos Bolt for the maximum duration on Immolate. We're going to immediately double cast Conflagrate or triple cast if you have the Nighthold Force set in order to maximize the buff on your Conflagrate with Roaring Blaze. You would then immediately summon your Infernal, assuming that you don't have the Lord of Flames debuff. If you do, then you would summon Doomguard instead, but ideally you won't. Then you'll immediately cast Grimoire Imp and then you'll cast Soul Harvest. Essentially what this does is gets all of our main DPS cooldowns out there. We have a buffed Immolate rolling on the target, we have the Infernal out, and we have the Grimoire Imp, all with the Soul Harvest and Empowered Life Tap backing behind them. Then it sort of can change depending on what you want to do. You can either cast Channel Demon Fire immediately after casting Soul Harvest, or you can cast one Dimensional Rift, or three if you're using Bloodlust, it's your choice. After that, you would simply cast the other ability. So if you cast a Channel Demon Fire first, you could then do your Dimensional Rifts, or you could do Dimensional Rifts first, then Channel Demon Fire. After that, you're going to want to cast Conflagrate immediately as it comes off of cooldown until there is less than 10 seconds remaining on your Immolate. So you're going to get at least three stacks in the opener for sure if you don't have the tier piece. You're going to get at least four stacks in the opener for sure if you do have the four piece. With Lust... Because the cooldown on Conflag is reduced by haste, you will actually be able to 5, 6, and even potentially 7 stack your Conflag onto your Immolate in the opener. After that, you're just going to Chaos Bolt. If you're going to or have capped on Soul Shards, it's really not that important on single target, but you don't want to cap on Soul Shards ever. And then, of course, maintain Empowered Life Tap throughout your opener as needed. So that is the opening sequ sequence for Destruction Warlock on single target. If we were to look at this in two t in a two-target situation, the difference would be after you cast your Chaos Bolt, and it could be an Incinerate even on two-target, might even be better, that way you can benefit from a double Chaos Bolt, you're, gonna want, you're going to want to Havoc a second target immediately with Wreak Havoc, we won't be taking Channel Demon Fire in this situation, and you're going to want to double cast your Immolate so that both targets get the maximum Immolate, and then you would continue the rotation as normal, just taking out Channel Demon Fire. So essentially it'd be the double cast empowered life tap, precast incinerate or chaos bolt if you would like, it doesn't really matter, it's your preference. Then you would cast havoc immediately on the target, and then you would double cast your immolate to get the maximum duration, double or triple conflag, summon infernal, summon imp, soul harvest, and then go into your dimensional rifts, casting conflagrate immediately as it comes off cooldown. So now that we've talked about talents in the rotation, let's take a look at the legendary items, which I know is a hot topic for a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys uh, definitely don't enjoy legendaries because you haven't been fortunate enough to get the good ones and i totally understand we're going to take a look at the legendary rankings and kind of talk about the use of some of the non-dps increasing legendaries and how they can be used in progression so the legendary rankings for destruction essentially goes the lessons of space time which were the newly introduced legendary shoulders sindori spite as they were very good before even after the nerf they are still very powerful, however they can only be obtained via a demonology loot spec, so you are going out risking to get another demonology legendary that you may not use. Keep that in mind, but it is risk versus reward. The third best legendary in general is going to be Kill Jaden's Burning Wish. This is the new trinket that is an on-use trinket that fires a massive orb at the target, dealing about 450k AoE damage to all targets within range. It's about an 8 to 10 yard range. After that is going to be Feratory of Souls, of course the belt. Then after that, Pride As, Magnum Opus is actually going to be a pretty solid choice because it is now quite a powerful stat stick. And the defensive bonus from using it is actually pretty, uh, pretty good as well. After that, Magistrike Restraints for two targets. And then anything past that realistically doesn't benefit you much of a DPS gain, if any at all. They're just going to be used as utility, and you can use them as you see fit. Things like Norganon's Foresight was changed, so after the change, standing still for 8 seconds does grant you Foresight, allowing you to cast while moving for 5 seconds. This is pretty good, and the duration begins when you start moving. Pillars of the Dark Portal are also a decent option if you have to get out of a situation very quickly. I've had to do that multiple times. And Safuza's Secret is obviously 
a stellar choice for Mythic Plus dungeons, as a lot of the adds within these dungeons can be CC'd, and it is a 25% haste bonus for 10 seconds, and 70% increased movement speed. Keep in mind, this can only occur once every 30 seconds, but the cooldown on Shadow Fury is long enough that that doesn't really matter. Before we get to gems and enchants, I certainly want to tell you guys a little bit about the recommended gear which you're going to be putting these gems and enchants on. So, the suggested gear for Nighthold, I'll actually have a list in the description of each item, and you can actually find that at the Wowhead Destruction Warlock Guide, which I wrote in the link below as well. It's down in a section on the Destruction Gear Guide called Suggested Gear for Nighthold. So the tier pieces that we're going to want to go for is going to be the helmet, the shoulders, the leggings, and the gloves. Our off pieces will be wrists, boots, of course, as they are not part of the tier set, the waist, the chest, the cloak, and then, of course, your necklace. I will have links to the gear, which you'll want to be using for that down below. The necklace is going to be the Radiant String of Scorpid Eyes, which drops off Scorporon. The cloak is going to be the Astromancer's Great Cloak. This drops off Star Augur Atreus. The chest is going to be the Robes of Fluctuating Energy. The waist will be Minari Skullbuckled Cinch, which drops off Croesus. The boots will be Outcast Wanderer's Foot Rags, which drop off Gul'dan. Keep in mind, you can get these on Heroic, so it's not like you'll have to be finishing Mythic to get these. The Bracers of Harnessed Flame for the wrists. The rings are the Ring of Braided Stems and the Ring of the Scoured Clan. And then the trinkets, hands down, are going to be Whispers in the Dark, which drops from Gul'dan, and Erratic Metronome, which drops from Anomaly in the Nighthold. Let's talk about the two-set bonus and the four-set bonus real quick while we're on the topic of gear. The two-set bonus, casting Chaos Bolt reduces the cast time of your next Chaos Bolt by 40% for four seconds. Keep in mind, this does definitely steer us away from the use of Backdraft, as the primary benefit from Backdraft is an increased cast, or a reduced, pardon me, cast time on Chaos Bolt. The 4 set can flag gains an additional charge in a 3 second reduced cooldown. These tier sets are extremely powerful and both of them push us away from the use of the backdraft talent in Towards Roaring Blaze. There's also the speculation and argument that uh, Roaring Blaze is less useful on movement based uh, high movement fights. If you think about it, because backdraft is essentially shifting your damage back towards Chaos Bolt, backdraft will be just as, if not more, hindered on high movement fights than Roaring Blaze, because Roaring Blaze, the primary ability that makes it powerful is your instant cast can flag, which can be done at any point in the fight. So realistically, Roaring Blaze is not as hindered in general as Backdraft. However, you do have to consider that with Roaring Blaze, you won't have as many fast casting Chaos Bolts that you may have to be moving for at some particular moment. However, the two set bonus does make our Chaos Bolt reduced by 40% if we chain them, so that does help alleviate that problem. And by the way, thank you to Silver over at the Warlock Discord. He definitely helped me out a lot with the suggested gear for Nighthold and the legendary rankings, so I very much appreciate that. Really quick, we're going to take a look at the stat priority for Destruction Warlock in patch 7.1.5. The stat priority generally will be haste over intellect. Intellect is pretty much equal to crit and mastery at this point, and all of those are more valuable than versatility. There are general stat weights available through the Warlock Discord, which I'll show you now. It's 1.2% haste for Roaring Blaze play, 1.1% haste for Backdraft, 1.0 for crit, 1.0 for mastery, 1.0 for intellect, and 0.9 for versatility. Keep in mind that Backdraft builds favor item level over stat distribution in almost all scenarios. And a special thanks to Gatto for providing those stat weights and that little bit of a tip right there for Backdraft. The last portion of this guide which we're going to take a look at is going to be enchants, gems, and consumables. So when it comes to enchants, we'll see a little bit of a change. So for the necklace enchant, in general, we'll want to use enchant necklace Mark of the Claw. Why, you ask? Well, Mark of the Hidden Seder does technically sim higher by about 1-2k to 2K DPS on single target. However, there's not that many single target fights within Nighthold, so in general the Mark of the Claw uh, enchant is going to benefit us more. For the ring enchants, it will be the same as we'll still use enchant ring binding of haste, and then for the cloak it will still be enchant cloak binding of intellect. For gems, we're going to see it stay exactly the same where we're using Quick Dawnlight and one Saber's Eye of Intellect in our gear at any given time. 
The last portion of this is the consumables. Of course, the flask of the Whispered Pack being the intellect flask is going to be the go-to. Potions, as I mentioned before, Potion of Deadly Grace is going to be better suited for quick single target burst phases or single target fights in general, and Potion of Prolonged Power is going to be better in every other situation. For runes, Defiled Augment Rune is still going to be the way to go as it's the only rune that currently exists. And keep in mind, Vantus runes uh, were uh, increased up to 1500 versatility from 1000. The last thing in this guide that I wanted to touch on was our artifact weapon, the Scepter of Sargeras. Keep in mind that this weapon, if you've been playing throughout the entire expansion, you're very likely close to 35 traits at this point, at which you'll only be putting your traits into stolen power, increasing the overall DPS of your character directly. The relics for this weapon, at this point, really don't matter that much. They're about 600 DPS between each other if they were all the exact same item level. So realistically, the main basis is going to be off of item level. If you can, still focus on traits that allow you to have Burning Hunger, which increases the critical strike chance of Immolate by 8%. Also, any traits that are going to give you just bonus Immolate damage in general. Soul Snatcher is also not a bad trait, as it's going to give you back some shards from casting Chaos Bolt. However, Keep in mind that there's a pretty good chance with this new tier set, especially if you have a Feratory, that you may end up shard capping yourself quite often if you have too many of those. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is technically an overall DPS loss if you're not able to utilize those shards efficiently. Also, one side note is you can have two of the same relic in your weapon. So if you do get two very good relics that are identical in the fell slot, you can put both of them in the fell slots. It is not unique equipped, so don't worry about that. Well guys, I think that about covers it for the 7.1.5 Destruction Warlock Guide. I do have a written version of this guide again on Wowhead, and I'll have a link to that down in the description. And I certainly urge you guys to go and check that out. There's a lot more specifics, a lot more detail about our class there that I just wasn't able to condense down into a video guide for you guys. So if you have made it to the end of this video, I certainly appreciate it. And I would absolutely appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and like the video. If you want to leave a comment with your opinion or just kind of uh, anything you really want to say down in the comments, you are more than welcome to do so. I also do have a Twitter account, which if you have one, I certainly would urge you to follow me on as I do post updates about upcoming guides and videos there. Keep in mind, guys, that we'll be releasing specific strategy guides for destruction and potentially affliction throughout the Nighthold Raid as we progress, so you guys can get an idea of how exactly you can maximize your performance on each fight. These will not be trolly videos like what Asmongold tends to put out, as they are hilarious and very good content to watch. Uh, these are going to be more serious guides that actually help you benefit your raid the most. But again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the Nighthold.